Hey, back again. It is 3.47 on a Monday. Um, all the social media experts would tell me to wait till everyone is off work to go online, but I felt compelled to talk, so here we go. Anyways, the question I'm asking you is, are you in control? Can you accept the results? And before I get to the second question, can you accept the results? I want to be very specific about the issue of control. And most people that I see, most companies, most people individually or otherwise are coming to me because they are a bit disgruntled, frustrated, angry, or unhappy um, with their results. But mostly, the deal is, most frustration, most unhappiness stems from feeling like you have a lack of control, not feeling like you have a purpose, uh, and then on top of that, not getting the results you want. That's it. So if we can get to a point to where we are in control of our own behavior, that we are working toward something fruitful that gives us meaning and purpose, that we have a sense of self-worth, of meaning about what we're doing, who we're affecting, uh, who to whom we're connected with. Those all lead to more positive outcomes and results and happiness. Now, the reason why I say, the reason why I ask, can you accept the results is because on our way towards working towards what we want, we may not like all of the outcomes, right? If you want to be a world champion basket weaver, there may be a piece of you that has to accept that that profession, that endeavor may not give you the life or lifestyle you want. May not. But I have some very close friends, successful friends that would argue and say, well, make a market for basket weaving. Make it happen. Find the solution. Instead of just complaining about there's no market for basket weaving and basket weaving is terrible, create the market. Make people want those <laughs> baskets. That's right, Alex. Make people want those baskets. Um, and, and that's really the basis of this. But, you know, this whole thing stemmed from this conversation I had with, with this young lady that I coach who's from another country, and, and it's a third world country. And I asked her about happiness and 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 I and ask her quite frankly about mental health I said well do do is there a depression or anxiety problem where you're from she said no she said most people you know just live their day and and she goes it's actually kind of hard they have to walk to get their food or they have to walk um, to school a couple miles or so you know they you know then or that whatever they grow or do they have to go to the market and sell it she goes, but mostly it's a non-issue. And that got me thinking. I was like, well, from a behavioral standpoint, from a pure behavioral standpoint, I'm not getting into the U.S. being gluttonous and I'm not getting into third world countries being more um, pious or on a higher moral ethical plane. I'm just saying from a pure behavioral standpoint, the bottom line is this, the act of going out and providing for your family, the act or the choice of, of um, educating yourself, making things better, the physicality of the work, getting the water, walking to school, the connectedness, man, I grew this, I sold this, and now I can take money home to feed my family. Or I built this, and now we can actually sleep in it or under it. That gives people, humans, an incredible sense of strength, autonomy, purpose, and meaning. All ingredients that lead to a happy life. Now, we can transport those behaviors and do those same things in our first world countries. We can. And I see people do it all the time. That said, as you know, what am I going to say? I love you guys. I really do. Uh, let's have a conversation on Instagram at real Dr. J rich or on my website, drjasonrichardson.com. And of course, 
bring me in to speak and train. Let's light it up. Let's set the direction. Let's get things going in a positive way. Live in the light, y'all. Peace. We'll see you later.